The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Thursday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got a market right now in positive territory. So much for the sell-off yesterday. We're right back to green territory. We start things off with the S&P. You're positive by one-third percent, trading at 46.58. You back things up to where we are, basically, right at the price that we were at at 8.30 a.m. yesterday. Quite the sell-off we had yesterday, all the way from 46.80 almost, the actual high, 46.78.50 on the futures. We trade down to 46.25.25, and since then, we've caught a little bit of a bid. Those lows made just prior to 3 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. S&P's up about a third of a percent. NASDAQ 100 up almost eight-tenths percent. You look where we are on the NASDAQ 100. Same exact action, folks. We're basically right where we were after the first 15 minutes of the the print of the CPI data. You see the 830 acceleration in the NASDAQ 100. You trade down to the price point of about 16,100 in the NASDAQ 100. Quite the sell off here as well. You trade from 16,000 to 21. You're talking about 300 plus points in the NASDAQ 100. Lows of 15,896. Uh, and then we rise from there. Lows made about 3 p.m. yesterday. Dow almost flat. A little bit of a difference in the Dow, right? You back things up to where we were at about 8.30 yesterday in the Dow. We're about 150 points below that level. Not quite the acceleration that we saw in the S&Ps and the NASDAQ. Dow barely in the green. And the Russell, similar, more similar, I should say, to the Dow. The Russell trading 23.99. You were down to 23.78 yesterday. Uh, not clawing back as many as the losses, as much of the loss, I should say, as the other indices have so far. Jumping around, what else we got going on? Bitcoin right now, hovering at around 65,000. There's some volatility yesterday for you on Bitcoin, up to 69,355, the high. Excuse me, folks, still battling, getting over this little cold. Uh, Bitcoin, quite an acceleration to lower prices. You traded down $6,000, $6,000 from the price point of 1 p.m. yesterday to the lows at about 4 p.m. yesterday. We're trading at 65000 in Bitcoin. Crude, quite a sell-off as well. We were talking to our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday. Uh, during the 9 o'clock hour, we had crude at about $84. From there, it sold off pretty hard. Traded down about $3 to $81 and change. Last night, you were down at an 80 handle. I should say early this morning, you were down at an 80 handle uh, yesterday afternoon. Right now, you got crude basically flat where we closed out the session yesterday at 81.33. Gold continuing to catch a bid. There's your acceleration on gold on the CPI data yesterday, up to 1870. We're coming right back up to those highs we had. Right now, you just made a high in the last half hour of 1868.70. So within about two bucks of the highs we had yesterday, gold up $16 on the session right now. We got silver up 47 cents. Silver actually just climbing above those highs we had on Wednesday. And we jumped to notes and bonds. Pretty tame action, quite the sell-off yesterday for notes and bonds. You back things up into where we are. You're talking about a yield of 1.57%. You just rose 10 basis points. That was quite a sell-off yesterday, folks. 131.18, you traded down more than a full point in the tenure. That is a an amazing move to, to, to struggle to find the word. Uh, amazing move. We take things a little bit longer context. We put it on a daily. And you can see, I mean, try and find a bar as big as the one we had yesterday, right? Yeah, you had a bar. Maybe you go back to September 23rd. You traded lower. Uh, you got to go back to some of these moves. That was quite a red bar in terms of price action yesterday. Lower prices, higher yields. The 10-year ticking at 1.57 percent. Let's jump over to the volatility index this morning. We spiked yesterday. Did we get to 20? We were right there. 1990 was the high yesterday. We'll put it on a 15-minute. There's your high print at about 3 p.m. yesterday. That's correlating to the market lows. Uh, and this morning, we're right back to under 18. VIX sitting at 17.65. All right, where do we kick things off? Let's kick it off with a little infl inflation talk. Uh, 
CPI data out yesterday, pretty hot number. A uh, couple articles, many articles being written about inflation this morning. Uh, Bloomberg, as they put it, inflation shock tears up trader playbook from stocks to bitcoins. Uh, CPI beat has investors sent investors looking for inflation hedges. That's been the story for a long time, folks. It keeps ticking across. One of the things I wanted to look at here, a couple charts they have in this article I was checking out this morning. Uh, U.S. bond market expectations for future inflation are surging with each new data point. What, ha what happened to transitory, folks? Things are heating up. It's not even that it's like uh, staying at the same hot rate. They're actually heating up. They were supposed to be pulling back. Uh, you start getting 1% inflation month over month. The Fed has to pay attention to that type of a number, folks, and that's almost where we were. Uh, the break-evens, which track the difference between yields on inflation-protected securities and regular treasuries, five-year break-evens climbed to a record. There you see the acceleration, folks, above now where we were in 2004, 2005. You were down to a low of about half a percent. You're now pushing 3%. When you talk about the five-year break-even rate, uh, inflation expectations coming off that chart, you slide down a little bit more. Growth stock valuations, most exposed to higher bond yields, uh, MCS, MSCI, I should say, technology index, we're talking about 26.6, that's the forward PE, you start getting some high, rising, rising uh, bond yields, that could put a hurt on some of those. Consumer discretionaries are pushing 25. That's quite a forward PE for consumer discretionaries uh, in a big way. You have gold that we've seen, gold continuing to run today. That could be an indication uh, where you are. You have Bitcoin running, could be an indication in the same essence. Uh, and you have a flattening yield curve, the US yield curve, the 530 yield spread. I mean, look at that drop off, right? Just from where we were in, in the early part of this year, we were pushing 160 basis points. You're now down to 60 basis points. Remarkable. You're back to basically the COVID lows. And at that time, biggest gain for 2021 pushes dollar gauge to one year high. The dollar trading higher in a big way. Uh, John Author is not familiar with this guy, but he's been writing a lot about inflation and he does not believe the transitory uh, argument here. Uh, this is an opinion piece out on Bloomberg, but it's official. The inflation numbers are a hot, sticky messes, as he put it. The debate over whether this is transitory is over. Again, an opinion piece, okay? Uh, I happen to agree with a lot of it, though. The question is now what to do. Really interesting to, to combine the fact that not only are we in a once in a you know, 100 year pandemic, okay? Uh, we have the great resignation, they call it, right? People stepping out of the workforce, reevaluating life. We gotta make up millions of jobs to get back to that same level. We have inflation running hot, rent prices, real estate prices through the roof, crude oil, higher prices on crude, food prices through the roof as well. Uh, and you get down to it in terms of where we're talking about, when you talk about uh, the Cleveland Fed trimmed mean CPI and the median CPI, I mean, just staggering numbers. I could, I could spend the whole show, folks, pulling up numbers in terms of standard deviations above its norm for the last 10 years, 5.3. If you're familiar with how standard deviations work, folks, 5.3 standard deviations, it's like hitting the lottery, okay? It just does not happen. Uh, that type of a standard deviation move, nonetheless, that's where we currently sit right now. Um, and so just pay attention. It's a lot of what's driving the action right now in a big way uh, in this market, and rightfully so. I mean, you're going to see interesting in terms of Chairman Powell. Uh, is he going to get replaced? Really interesting in terms of the context of where we are right now, what the Fed is doing, the inflation argument. We'll find out, folks. We'll find out soon. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. we got a lot to go over. we got some earnings moving. we got Rivian pumping it out yesterday. we got Tesla moving. We're going to talk to Kevin Hanks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up 16 points. NASDAQ 100 up 116 points. Dow up 21. Russell up 10. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, the TD Ameritrade Network live on Tiger TV. Fast market with your host, Kevin Hick, Tom White, checking out the market action, breaking down hypothetical trade setups. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Uh, you know, a light day for economic data. Uh, because of Veterans Day, but Tommy, you know, this market reacted y yesterday to fears about inflation and everything else that, that was going on. But so far this morning, obviously subject to change without notice, Tommy, as always, uh, you know, this market is jumping back. You know, Tesla basically put a little uncertainty in the market over the weekend when Elon Musk talked about selling stock. Well, it turns out yesterday he did. And that being over, that event being past the overall market has Tesla now looking up about $35. So the fact that Elon Musk is through that event is put a little bit under Tesla. And, you know, Tesla caused the uncertainty Monday morning and Tuesday and throughout the week. And inflation added to that. And now Tesla seems to be giving the market a bid higher, Tommy. Kevin, I'm going to keep you on the show for two hours today, and we're going to talk about Tesla for the entire time. And I don't even think we'll be able to break down all the action in that stock in terms of what's happening uh, just this week alone. I was reading articles last night, man, talking about uh, Elon ex uh, exercising some of his options on Monday, uh, the tax bill for his exercise on Monday having to do with the stock price on Monday. Uh, some would say, myself included, that the tweet over the weekend might have influenced the share price to trade lower on Monday, allowing him to exercise those options, decreasing his tax bill, and then the stock's gonna rise back up. But man, like I said, we could spend uh, all day, but yeah, crazy, back to 1100 bucks on Tesla, man, like a, in an instant. And I had to have a chuckle this morning, Kevin. I woke up, man, pulled out my phone, Checked out the Thinkorswim mobile app, pulled up the, the indices because yesterday was a little dicey. I was a little bit more interested today when you get a sell off like that. And I had to chuckle, man. I said, up, oh, higher prices. Here we go again. Um, 
With that going on, Kevin, you talked about the CPI data. That's still a lot of articles out there today talking about the CPI numbers. Um, but we move on. We have some earnings numbers. What are you looking at for this market as we come into Veterans Day, November 11th? Remarkable that we're going to be through November. Before we know it, we're going to start talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, end of 2021. Remarkable the resilience of this market with the S&P sitting at 46.57 right now. And, and that is because... Every now and then, Tommy, the market looks up at the 10-year yield and reminds itself that it's at 1.5. And it's not at 2.5 or, you know, the last time we had inflation worries in this country, serious ones, uh, the 10-year yield was at like 8. So <laughs> every now and then you've got to remind yourself that you've got a historically low 10-year yield. Even at 1.56%, it's still historically low. So stocks still are in favor, even though the 10-year yield moved from the mid-1.4s, which it had just moved down from, up to back up to 1.55. So, you know, every now and then, you have to remember, we're looking at a pretty healthy economy with pretty good earnings and extremely historic low interest rates, Tommy. Yeah, it's remarkable, man, in terms of, of course, growth stocks, NASDAQ 100, the FANG stocks in particular, just been so strong um, over the last how many months, man, it just doesn't stop. Uh, a lot of the rhetoric having to do with, you know, if there's rising yields, um, that could hurt these growth stocks. And, and, you know, there's some validity to that for sure. But you make a great point, man. I mean, we're talking about a yield of 1.5% right now, and these technology companies are just seems like they're just growing gangbusters, man. Yes, they do have some rising costs, but in the context of your putting it, man, you know, if you're talking about 1.5%, you're talking about 1.4, you're talking about 1.7. Uh, the conversation, Kevin, months back, right, was not sitting at 1.5%. That was not the worry in this market in terms of yields. The worry was what, 2%, 2.5%, something like that. If you said the market was gonna be at 1.5%, Kevin, in the middle of November, if you said that maybe in the middle of the summer, uh, I think traders would have rejoiced dramatically right now in terms of where they are. And, and maybe that's part of what's kind of put in this market, just kind of elevated to, to almost record levels across the board right now on all four indices, which is remarkable. Yeah, and, and heaven forbid, some of these supply chain problems may start to ease, right? If you're starting to see that happening, Tommy, like chips coming to uh, some of the automakers and chips coming to companies in general, if we get a good jolts number tomorrow, right, where people are moving off the sidelines into the labor force, if we get some of these ships emptied and some of the, you see those numbers go down and some of those goods start to come into the country, all those things can do two things, right? They can help the economy while still bringing down the level of inflation, Tommy. And all remember, a big part of yesterday's number, though it was dominated by energy, Tommy, look at the move in crude oil since then, right? Crude oil has come down pretty significantly since then. Why? Demand destruction or the fear of demand destruction over $80 in crude oil. So sometimes these are self-correcting, um, you know, Units, right, that that uh, higher prices lead to less demand, which lead to lower prices. And so there's a lot of moving parts in this economy that could could lead to less inflation in the future, Tommy. Econ 101, man, right there. Right. Uh, and you can't help but, but notice the prices, even myself filling up the gas tank, man, you know, it moves a little bit. But right now, man, that sticker price on a fill up of just a gas tank, let alone how it translates to heating prices, et cetera, throughout you know, all of our daily lives, uh, very obvious to many consumers that you have to be aware of those types of prices because it's hitting everybody. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we're still in some earnings going on. What are you guys chatting about on the program coming up at 12 today? You know, as I look on the calendar, Tommy, there's not a lot of great high profile names to deal with today after the bell. We'll probably do something in in a, in a theme show, I think what we're going to do, Tommy, we're working on it right now, is something in the Present. payment space. Remember, with PayPal's earnings, they have really gotten beaten up this week. I think we'll look at some of the payment stock, Visa, MasterCard, Square, names like that after the PayPal event. 
I look forward to that, man, because uh, I don't have any PayPal yet. And even on my own radar, Kevin, you know, I said to myself, strong company, PayPal for sure. Any yeah. Visa strong company, uh, you have to start consider maybe if you're not in some of these equities. And this is myself talking, you know, if I could have had it at 310 just a few months ago, man, maybe 210 is at least a partial position that you could get into it uh, if you haven't rode that yet. Now, I just want to finish it up, Kevin, with the conversation about Rivion. Pretty interesting just from a, a market perspective, uh, electric vehicles. Tesla, the story of, of, of the day, month, year. Uh, Rivian, pretty remarkable. You got a company with no revenue, man, pushing, what are they talking about, almost $100 billion even today. Uh, Rivian's going to open up 15% right now, Kevin, from where it closed at yesterday. Uh, we got about 30 seconds here. Give me a little take of what you think of the Rivian action so far. You know, R R Rivian, unlike some of these smaller companies, Tommy, in the EV space, they have some big partners in Amazon and Ford. So, they are a company that's going to be here, not going anywhere, and will eventually be a pretty big competitor to Tesla. It's pretty cool, man. I was reading about uh, their CEO, MIT graduate, PhD, kind of stayed under the radar. Uh, a little bit of uh, inverse to Elon Musk's playbook. Um, but, man, they're coming out strong right now. And I agree, 100,000, not bad to have a 100,000 vehicle purchase order when you go public. Kevin, man, we appreciate the conversation. We'll be watching the show at noon Eastern time today. Have a great one, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me you on. You too, Kevin. Thanks so much. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Well, welcome back, folks. We got the markets open. We got the S&Ps up 13 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 115. Dow just slipping back into the red right now. A little bit of a sell-off on the open, just barely back under 36,000. We got the S&Ps up by 12, as I mentioned. Let's jump back to Rivian, R-I-V-N. Rivian shares up another 12% right now from 95 yesterday, 120 uh, on the top of it. And let's jump to Tesla, see how Tesla shares are trading this morning. Tesla shares up 2.5%, sitting at 1,100. I want to touch real quick on Tesla, what I alluded to, chatting with our man Kevin Hicks. Uh, article on the journal, I think this was yesterday. Uh, when was I reading this? Yes, yesterday, last night. Uh, checked it out early this morning. Um, they talk about, so he sold $5 billion of Tesla. This is Elon Musk this week as he ex exercised stock options that he received as part of his compensation package, according to regulatory filings made public last night. Uh, he first exercised just over 2 million stock options Monday that were valued at $2.5 billion, paying around $13.4 million in exercise costs. How's that for a trade? $13 million to $2.5 billion. This is the reason for the tax bill for Mr. Musk. Uh, he sold many of those shares the same day to cover tax withholding obligations, right? So you got to sell... You don't have to if you just want to pay it in cash, but most of the time you're, you're going to pay the taxes anyway when you exercise them. You sell a portion of that position to pay enough of the taxes to hold the rest of the position. After selling less than 1% of his holding mon holdings Monday, he sold about 2% over the subsequent two days. The regulatory notices show he sold around 4.5 million shares in total over the three days, shrinking the size of his holdings in Tesla even after exercising the options. So he exercised options, and then after three days, he actually ends up with a smaller position than he started with. Not usually the case when you exercise options. Uh, we all know about the poll on Twitter over the weekend. Monday's option exercise and sales were made under the preset A preset trading plan that Mr. Musk established on September 14th. Okay, so Mondays, keep this in mind, Mondays only, we're not talking about Tuesdays and Wednesdays, that's going to be the difference here, uh, made as a result of the plan put in place, it's dubbed, uh, what, uh, 10B5, one plan is a dub, uh, designed to enable company insiders to sell based on a set schedule, price trigger, triggers, or other factors, uh, help, it's made to help them avoid any type of insider trading rules, allegations, uh, not sure Mr. Musk is concerned about that with everything going on. The filings that disclose the subsequent sales on Tuesday and Wednesday don't include the same footnote. So Tuesday and Wednesday were not part of that, folks, okay? To keep it in mind. So the Monday sale, already pre-designed, preset trading plan, part of that plan that was arranged on September 14th. Tuesday and Wednesday, that's just Elon selling. Mr. Moss signaled at a September conference that he expected to exercise options in the fourth quarter, a move that would trigger what he called a huge tax liability. He reported selling more than 900,000 shares at a price range of 1135 to 1196 on Monday. Not a bad exit. Uh, we're still not back to those prices. Uh, the difference between the value when you exercise the options, and check this out, the exercise price of six dollars and 24 cents man uh how's that having a call option basically at six dollars on an eleven hundred dollar equity the difference between those two values is what is taxable income um, and likely a tax deduction for the company i mean this is important stuff i got quite a lesson just even reading it as they walk it through it the lower the share price goes okay if he continues to exercise options the smaller his tax bill will be so ideally Ideally, right, in, a, in, a, in, a, in Elon's world, okay, he would love to take the shares on Monday, exercise his options, that locks in the price of the tax bill that you have, and then it would be amazing if he could somehow just have a one-day pullback and then the stock rebounds so he doesn't hurt himself too much when it comes to the market capitalization or equity that he has in those shares. Uh, he would also owe taxes after selling any shares that he obtains through exercising options based on any gain realized after exercising them. Those gains are taxed as capital gains, though any quick sales would be taxed as ordinary income because they were held for less than one year. Uh, you're talking about capital gains Tuesday, so 
he sold Tuesday and Wednesday at a price between 1000 and 1173 uh, Couldn't be determined the cost basis for those shares. Uh, now, here's the interesting part that I've highlighted, okay? Thanks to the decline in Tesla's share price Monday, the CEO's tax bill is likely to be lower than it would be if he had exercised his options before the poll. For example, exercising at Friday's closing price would have yielded taxable income about 5 percent higher if you don't think that's market manipulation you're not paying attention but he's not going to get caught folks because you can't prove it no way all he did was ask a question on twitter uh he's got a very defensible position he's a very intelligent man he knows what he's doing but if you're trading tesla that's one of the variables that you have to consider is that the ceo richest man in the world is totally cool with manipulating the share price as long as he has cover for himself to hide the taxes that he owes by tanking the share price purposely on Monday to get a lower price for the print when he exercised the options, causing himself a lower tax bill. It's really remarkable, folks, in terms of the way he's doing that and the way he's getting away with it. Not sure there's much you can do because he's got a little bit of cover there. Um, Pretty astounding, nonetheless. We'll leave it at that. Tesla shares up 2.1% today. Let's jump over to Rivian. Rivian shares up 11.5%. Amazon had quite a wild ride yesterday, up to 36.05. You give it back down to 34.75. You're up 1.1% today. We jump over to some of those tech stocks. Microsoft shares up about six tenths percent right now. We jump to Google shares up about three quarters percent. Facebook shares up 1.2 percent. We got the Nasdaq 100 up a solid seven tenths percent right now uh, as you got growth stocks rising to higher prices. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump to some of the companies that had their earnings. We'll kick it off with one of my favorites uh, and not a favorite last night. Disney misses on streaming growth. Uh, they were down about seven bucks last night. Earnings, 37 cents versus 51 expected. Revenue, they miss 18.53 billion versus 18.71. Uh, the headline news of that, people always wondering because Disney, they are becoming a streaming company first. Added 2.1 million Disney Plus subscribers to a total of 118.9. That was more than a million miss in terms of what they were looking for. Uh, let's see, however, Wall Street was more bullish. Uh, company report 125, I guess 9.4. That's the first time I saw it that high. Uh, numbers for the first, first quarter during the company's earnings call. Uh, their CEO reiterated the company's goal of reaching 230 to 260 million Disney Plus subscribers by 2024. Keep it in mind, folks, okay? Netflix took 10 years to get to 100 million subscribers and Disney down 8% now to 160. Uh, it took Disney two years. Disney's only been a streaming company for two years and they've got 118 million subscribers. Quite a pullback on a weekly basis. We're now back to the 50% retracement from where we were. And folks, if you're looking to get in Disney, uh, you get back to this 153 area, which is back to November of 2019, let alone potentially back to the area we had in July, which would be about 147. But the reason why I bring up the 150 area is because that's also going to correlate to the 618 of the full run we had when Disney accelerated higher uh, on the news of the vaccines, et cetera. You accelerate from a price point of about 117 up to 203. We've almost given back that 618. I love the 618. I love the 382. We chopped around at the 382 for a while. Disney accelerating lower on that miss last night. Keep your eye on 150 if you're looking to enter Disney shares, uh, trading down about 8% today. We'll jump back, folks. We'll check out some of the other companies. We got Beyond Meat. They're chatting about Beyond Meat. Fake meat, not doing so well. Beyond Meat trading lower this morning. We'll pull them up when we get back from the break, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727 329 
8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up seven right now, jumping back to Rivian. So this is an interesting one. So they go public yesterday. Uh, this talking about, so if you pre-ordered an electric SUV or truck, uh, you could have made some cash on that IPO as you were given some access for the IPO allocation. All you had to do was put down a thousand bucks to reserve uh, a Rivian electric SUV earlier this year. They talk about one gentleman, it looks like, a consultant in Austin, Texas, put down a thousand bucks to reserve it. He has no idea when he's gonna get that vehicle, um, but his down payment has already paid off dramatically when you look at what's happening here. So as a pre-order customer, you were able to buy into the Rivian IPO on Tuesday night as part of the company's directed share program. He purchased the maximum 175 shares, okay, at the $78 IPO price. And let's see, is he making more cash this morning? I think he is already. You're up another 8%. As of the close uh, yesterday, that was a gain of about $4,000. So think about that. You pay 1000 bucks for get to gain access to 175 shares of the IPO. You make four grand by doing that. You're up even more today, right? You're up 175 shares. You're up another almost $1,750 right now on that purchase at 109. Uh, pretty cool how that's going down in terms of how they're doing that. Um, and you may see that become more of, uh, I was going to say more of a feature. I mean, Rivian's in a class of its own though. There's not going to be many Rivian IPOs that go IPO at a public, uh, IPO valuation of 100 billion, but they reserved up to 7% of the IPO shares for the direct, uh, participants there as the company laid out in its prospectus. So pretty cool how that goes out in terms of trying to service those customers. Uh, not a bad idea in terms of trying to make the customers happiest. Uh, it seems like a move right out of Elon's playbook, right? I would believe that one in a big way. All right. What else we got going on? Jumping down the line here. We talked about Tesla. We talked about Rivian. Now we'll get to Beyond Meat. How about, let's see, they were down 20%. Uh, wider loss of 87 cents a share 
for the third quarter compared to 39 cents. Missed on revenue, bringing in 106 million versus 109. Now I'm pulling up a tweet here if I can real quick because they have some problems, folks, uh, in terms of long-term growth on this equity. Come on, I gotta find it. All right, I'll find it at the break. Um, in terms of, excuse me, one second, I thought I had it. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. Give me one second. Here we go. Perfect. Uh, I'm not familiar with this gentleman, Charlie Biello, Compound Capital Advisor. So he's some kind of financial advisor. But nonetheless, look at these numbers, folks. Beyond meat, net income. Okay, 2016, they lose 25 million. 2017, they lose 30. They lose 30 in 2018. They lose 12 in 2019. They lose 53 million in 2020. And year to date, three quarters through the year, they have lost $102 million. Not what you want to see, folks. We jump over to the chart. BYND is their symbol, down 17%. You take a look at this thing on a longer term basis. We're down at 78 bucks. Where's the next stop? Next stop is 55 at the lowest, folks. Remarkable that you've given it all back. You were at 220 earlier this year. 220. And you're trading at 78. You were at 239 back in July of 2019. And I remember when that was happening, folks. My dad and I were doing the program in the morning. And I remember comparing the valuation of a company like Beyond Meat to a company like, let's just say, Tyson, right? Which has uh, the complete build out in terms of delivery process. Um, delivery network, et cetera. And the valuations were so close for a company like Beyond Meat versus a company like Tyson, which is going to be a competitor, okay? Beyond Meat, I mean, there's there's nothing that's going to prevent them from having competitors in this space. Uh, and you've seen it play out over the better part of really uh, more than two years now on that, that you got Beyond Meat down 17% at 78 bucks. And what are we dealing with right now? Let's see, market valuation wise, probably talking about 10 billion or something like that. Where are we at? No, 5 billion, 5 billion we're at. Uh, so what are we at? Yeah, it would have pushed this company to about a valuation of 15, 16 billion dollars back in 2019, which just seemed bonkers. Uh, we jump over to Tyson. I think that's TSN. Yes, it is. Now, Tyson, you look at where we were back in 2019. Let's find the prices. We're basically sitting at the same price that we were at uh, in 2019, give or take. We're at 82. You were in between about 80 and 90 during that period of time. And you look at Tyson for evaluation. Tyson is pushing $30 billion. And that was the point. You had a company like Beyond Meat that was over half the value of a company like Tyson Foods, and Tyson's gonna have their own Beyond Meat, folks, and they have the whole delivery network distribution network. That's what I was looking for. They have the distribution for that type of thing. Uh, just keep your eye on that. Sometimes a lot of equities getting a little bit ahead of themselves, to put it lightly. All right, jumping down the line to some of the other stocks that we have moving today. Uh, so far, yeah, talk about a jump, man. They were up 13%, better than expected quarterly results, res, results last night. A loss of $0.05 cents a share. Market was looking for a loss of $0.09. Cents. We jump over to their, some, their shares, SOFI, up 13.7% challenging the highs we had back in May, that high 24.95, we reach a high, I think that's today of 24.65, let's put it back on a daily, there you go, 24.65, up 14% for SoFi so far. Affirm, the buy now, pay later darling, rallied 25% in early trading after announcing an expansion of its partnership with Amazon, quarterly revenue beat, 269 million versus 248, a firm, man. Uh, folks, stay away from buy now, pay later uh, deals. Up 16%, uh, somewhere in this glimpse, they, they teamed up with Amazon. Maybe it was in October, I'm not sure. Maybe it was the jump they had in August. Nonetheless, you're talking about almost a triple bagger from where we were in August, up to 176 recently, a little bit of volatility recently. Um, this seems to be the new, new vogue way for people to incur debt, which is a bummer. Um, you know, you start buying now, paying later on everything on Amazon. Folks, if you can hold off without doing that, that would be advised to put it lightly because uh, you never know when you're gonna need that cash in future months, right? You might be able to plan it in future months, but uh, I know it's easier said than done sometimes, but Unfortunate, in my opinion, that these buy now, pay later companies are skyrocketing recently as it seems to be the trend that is going to flourish in the future. And that is not a trend that is going to be beneficial for many people using that. Because if you, you're buying now, paying later on smaller priced items, 
boy, that is going to hurt you in the long run where you're already adding to the debt that many Americans have uh, on their credit cards, student loans, et cetera. Uh, we talked about Disney in a big way and Bumble. How about Bumble? Uh, not quite living up to the expectations. A loss of six cents a share. Market was looking for break even. Revenue came in better than forecast, but looks like the uh, dating boom, not quite back to where they want. There's Bumble shares. Bumble trading down 16% right now. Uh, don't remember the last time I had this trend line on there. I hadn't taken a look at it in a while, but nonetheless, there we are. And interesting, I mean, that was a negative trend line. We accelerate above that trend line in August. We've now come back and tested that trend line and owe to our man Bud Rolfs. Now, not a channel line, okay? We don't have a channel line really forming. You could say maybe that channel line is on the lower boundary here. Um, but you all do want to keep your eye on that because interesting how we've come right back to that channel line. We were just trading at 60 bucks a month ago, folks, not even a month ago, and Bumble back to 40 bucks right now. You're talking about, let's pull up the valuation real quick before we jump to break. $5 billion company for Bumble. Uh, right on par with Beyond Meat. Bumble, $5 billion. Beyond Meat, $5 billion. Both of them down dramatically today. Stay tuned, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 10. We got the NASDAQ up 98. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about our man Larry Pezzavento. He's got a live trading webinar coming up in six days, folks, next Wednesday. Be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks, with the S&Ps up 13 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 122. Let's jump to Tesla. Always interesting, man. Talk about some market volatility. Tesla up 1.2% today, uh, trading at 1,081. We jump over to the TFNN homepage, folks. Larry Pezzavento, his program coming up at 11 a.m. Eastern time today. Next Wednesday, he's not going to be doing his show, folks, because he's going to be in there for five hours live trading for a live trading webinar. Trade what you see Wednesday, November 17th, six days from now. Remarkable. I encourage you to come on over to the front page of TFNN, check out Larry's webinar. He's got all of what he'll be talking about in there. Click on the link. You can see kind of what he'll be talking about in terms of methodology with the live trading that he'll be doing. Last one he did of this was in August, doesn't remember, three or four months. This will probably be the last one he does, at least this calendar year, stretching into 2022. Uh, the cost to attend. $295 included in that, a free month of Fibonacci 24-7. That's a $97 value right away. So it kind of brings the cost right down to $200 or under that level. This will be archived. The full five hours will be archived, folks. When you sign up, you immediately gain access to Fibonacci 24-7. You can experience that leading up to next Wednesday. Larry always does an outstanding job. Uh, for those of you that paid and attended in August, you'll be receiving free entry into this. Larry wanted to give you that. Uh, so it should be a good turnout. Should be a good group of traders in there in the trading room. Uh, bouncing questions off Larry that we can all learn from. I'm looking forward to that as well. Check it out on the front page of TFNN six days from now. November 17th with our man Larry Pesavento. Trade what you see, a live trading event. All right, checking back in the markets. Pretty tame action to kick things off, right? You look where we are on the S&Ps. You do dive a little bit lower, but kind of right back to where we were within a couple points of the open right now at 46.54. Dow slipping a bit. Under 36,000, 35,941, we got Bitcoin back above 65,000. We got crude right now at 81,89 and that gold contract sitting at 1863 and we'll finish it up with the VIX. We got a market that is trading higher s and is where the VIX is predicated. We get the VIX right now at 1760. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He did his show at 8 a.m. this morning. We're going to play that right now for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Larry Pesavento, he's live at 11. Check out his live trading webinar on the front page of TFNN. Fast Market coming up at 12. They'll be talking some payment stocks. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien live this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody.